this is JavaScript and uh, this is Python. Um, and you notice that the, so this, this simple program really is, is doing nothing more than just printing the first 10 natural numbers. And you notice that printing the first 10 natural numbers is quite easy here, right? Um, all I need is three lines of code for me to be able to print the, uh, the first 10 natural numbers. I don't know if zero is a natural number, but that's besides the point. Um, but you immediately notice that the, the building blocks that I'm working with here are readable, right? So things like for, var, number, equals, if you've done maths, you know what equals is. If you've done maths, you know what this greater or equal to sign means, right? Um, this is besides the point here. But there's, there's a whole range of programming languages that um, um, are available out there, hundreds of them. Um, I dare you to just do a simple search uh, for list of high-level programming languages. You'd be amazed as to how many there are out there, right? Um, maybe now would be a good time to just do a, a simple demo here. And I'll, I'll use JavaScript here to say I want to print the first 10 natural numbers. Notice that it's as easy as me just saying um, I want to print a uh, number beginning 0. And I want this number to be greater or equal to 10. And I want to increment this number uh, every time I print it. Um, and then I want to log the number, right? And then I'll print it out. So you see how easy it is. So I just use JavaScript for to do that. Um, if I wanted to do this in Python, you notice that it's even much easier in Python. I'll just say for a number in range uh, 10 or 11 in this case, just say print number, right? So I do this in, in just essentially two lines of code. Easy. Just if, if you don't understand any of this, um, the point is not for you to learn or know how to write a computer program, but, but rather to gain an appreciation of the fact that the building blocks that you make use of are things that are readable, right? They are human readable. Uh, eh getting excited here. I can also do this using shell script or just say for a uh, number in uh, sequence uh, 0 to 10 and just say do echo number, right? Done. So I'm just showcasing examples using different high-level languages. Um, I use JavaScript, uh, Python, and uh, Bash, right? All right. Um, but in comparison to low-level languages such as uh, MIPS assembler, for instance, so assembly language programs and machine code, you notice that um, if you look at uh, uh, assembly language, these building blocks are not immediately intuitive. For you to be able to understand what BGT is, what LI is, you'd need to read the manual associated with this particular assembly language um, uh, that is on the slide, right, which is MIPS assembler, right? Um, and, and the reason why these mnemonics, so the building blocks, the reason why they're not human readable is they provide a direct mapping between these individual instructions, so these lines that you're seeing here, to the actual binary code that is executed by the computer system, right? Uh, so low-level low level language versus high-level language, uh, uh, low-level programming languages. Um, but you notice that even as, as you look at the so-called low-level programming languages, you immediately um, realize that there's still a difference, right? So um, this screenshot here uh, is showcasing a mapping between um, what you're seeing on the far left of the screenshot is a hexadecimal representation of the machine code, which is, for MIPS, it's represented using 32 bits, but it, it, it is presented alongside, uh, alongside the assembly, assembly instruction, right, um, associated with this particular program. Again, this, this program really that you're seeing on the screenshot does the same thing as 
these programs that I was showcasing, right? It's the same exact thing, right? Um, maybe another example would be good here. So if I was to fire up this MIPS simulator here, and uh, if I load the, and I hope I get to the point, okay, assembler. If I load this program, right? And the program that I just loaded, by the way, is is the same one that you're seeing on the screenshot. So if I was to quickly navigate to um, the folder that has that particular program, um, you will notice that, uh, just quickly order them by, there we go. So immediately notice that uh, it's, it's similar to what is actually in the slides, right? So this program does nothing more than print the first 10 natural numbers, right? Um, in case people want proof here, so I've loaded the program. If I execute it, you notice that this console prints uh, number zero all the way up to 10. So same thing that I'm able to do using Bash, using Python, and using um, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript using Node.js there. Um, I can do with assembler, right? But 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 in case you haven't noticed, you immediately realize that uh, as as you as you abstract the native language even more, the number of lines of code that you need to do the same thing is significantly reduced, right? So for both Python and Java in this case, all I need is two or three lines of code. But if you look at the number of lines of code that I need to print. Uh, 10 natural numbers. If I write the program in MIPS assembler, you realize that I need uh, 29 lines of code, right? Um, because the level of abstraction is much lower here. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it gets even better though. So these, the, what the computer actually works with is not, is not, uh, is not uh, the assembly language instructions, but rather the ones and zeros, the binary, right? The binary, the streams of ones and zeros, the binary code. Um, and actually you, you soon get an appreciation. We are, abstract, we are abstracting all of this, which is why we are saying uh, the computer executes ones and zeros, but, but really fundamentally, what, what a computer actually works with is flow of current, right? So a zero would represent maybe a low voltage of electricity and the high is a high voltage of electricity. A one, sorry, is a high voltage of electricity. Or perhaps in certain instances, a zero will mean there's no flow of electricity and the one, it means that there's flow of electricity, right? Through a circuit, through a circuitry, right? So um, again, we are saying it's ones and zeros because we are abstracting all of this, but I assure you very soon, all of this will become clear. 